Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Canon 211 on the Paleocrat Diaries. I am your host, Jake Fowler, here with a very, very special guest. And I mean very special. This is my friend and the brilliant Dr. Lawrence Feingold. Dr. Feingold, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. It's a joy well, to it, be. The honor, yeah, well, <laughs> I tell you, the, the pleasure is mine, the honor is mine. Uh, Larry and I have known each other for, I think, 10 years. Wow. Do you believe that? Maybe a little more. I think we met in 2013, um, just before Francis was elected as Pope. Okay. And uh, if I may share a bit of personal history. Okay. Um, Larry, you are the reason that I wanted to be a teacher. I don't know if I've ever told you that. Um but I, I was working as a policeman. We had come into mm -hmm. contact with one another through uh, the Sarah Club. The Sarah Club right. is, a, is an organization. They're international, and they, their, their mission is to support priests and seminarians and religious vocations in general. And so that put us in contact, my wife and I, in contact with uh, the, the faculty at the seminary you teach at, Kenrick Glennon here in St. Louis. Um, and... It was through your humble witness mm -hmm. that inspired me to go back to school and to leave law enforcement behind uh, and eventually pursue a career in teaching. And so I, I'm a theology teacher at a high school now, thanks to you. So praise uh, God. From, for, <laughs> amen. Amen. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you, mm -hmm. Larry. Um, and again, this is an honor. Folks, tonight I have asked Dr. Feingold to walk us through donum veritatis now this is the 1990 cdf document on the ecclesial vocation of the theologian and what all that means we will get to in just a moment before i do i want to remind you all about my locals community canon 211 so named after the code of canon law number 211 that indicates that the lay faith will have not only the right but in fact the duty to evangelize that's what we're doing right now we're bringing the message of the gospel in some small way to anyone who sees or hears this. And so I would encourage you, invite you personally to become a member at canon211.locals.com. And if you are so inclined, support me and my work, support my family so that I can continue to do things like this and have awesome guests like Dr. Feingold. Okay. Uh, with that awkwardness out of the way, here we are. So, um, Larry, what can you tell us about Donum Veritatis? So it's a beautiful document from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith um, under then Prefect um, jo Cardinal R Joseph Ratzinger. And um, it's a beautiful document about the vocation of the theologian and the responsibility of the theologian to promote the truth of God's revelation as um, entrusted to the magisterium of the church. And therefore, a theologian isn't a, um, a lone ranger or a private actor, but um, the theologian has an ecclesial vocation. So just the very title is beautiful, mm -hmm. um, that we're called um, to work um, as a vocation within the church, united with um, uh, yeah, the magisterium of the church under receiving the faith um, through the successor of Peter and his um, his magisterium. And um, we our ecclesial vocation works in two ways. And we build, we're called to help build up the church in our own way, just as a teacher of theology. And we're called then also to receive what we pass on from the church. And so there's a twofold ecclesial dimension, receiving from Holy Mother Church so as to pass on her authentic teaching, and not simply my private um, theological opinions. All right, that, there's a place for that too, if, as long as I label okay, it. Okay, sure. Yeah, I was I was just going to ask: is there is there no room for uh, speculation? But you you sure. Can't. Yeah, sure. But distinguish it from passing on the faith of the church um, and her right. ordinary magisterium. Yeah, so that's kind of the overarching. And then part of this, the context for this is the theological dissent that happened after the Second Vatican Council, right? So we know that in oh, the okay. late 60s, early the 70s and 80s, there were a lot of dissenting theologians who were not um, doing theology in the ecclesia way we just outlined, 
receiving from the church so as to give um, her authentic teaching. But theologians very often, and still do, um, they can think of themselves as a parallel magistori- magisterium that actually um, has more authority, the authority of scholarship, than the um, hierarchical magisterium. Sure. Um, and so, uh, after the last council, were there was it primarily one group of theologians that were erring in this manner or was it sort of all over the map? I, I mean, I think the, the typical yeah. narrative you hear is that it was the, um, and I hate these categories, but for mm-hmm. semantic purposes, the, the more liberal theologians, uh, were there others or was it really sure. just the problem on the left? No, no, no. It was on both sides, right? One can reject the authentic magisterium and rejecting Vatican II, for example, and that would be, you know, Archbishop Lefebvre, Society of St. Pius X, and um, others along that line, um, mm. or from thinking that Vatican II didn't go far enough and putting forth something that's contrary to the council as if it were the spirit of the council, but it's actually contrary to the authentic magisterium of the church. And I think they were far larger numbers and had greater public influence. But nevertheless, yes, one can fall off a mountain on either side, as it were. Sure. So in paragraph six, uh, one of the lines, I've got a copy of the document here. Mm -hmm. And one of the lines. Ladies and gents, the preview is over. To watch the full video, go to canon211.locals.com and become a member, become a supporter, get access to exclusive content, stay in touch with the Canon 211 community. Well, that's it for today. Never give up, keep on smiling, and memento mori. Cheers.